Hi, everybody. My name is Lena Burke, and today I'm going to teach you how to narrate a PowerPoint and then use that as a video tool as you're delivering content to students from a distance. In speaking with a lot of teachers during this weird time in our careers in education, uh, I've heard a lot of teachers say that they're planning on using videos of themselves teaching to continue delivering instruction to students. Um, and one of the biggest benefits of this approach is that you can keep your teaching style that both you and your students are already used to, uh, but still be able to reach them from a distance. One of the complaints though that I've heard about this approach is that some teachers don't want their faces to be displayed all across the internet and in all the students' homes just because that's slightly uncomfortable, uh, which is totally understandable. And I actually felt the same way when I was uh, deciding whether or not to create videos for music sub plants, uh, which I did so that I could ensure music instruction was happening while I wasn't in the building. Um, and the solution that I found was to create a PowerPoint, but then have my voice as the narration in the background. So this gives students something to focus their eyes on, which is the slides, but still allows me to be the one explaining the concepts in the background the way I normally would. This is especially helpful also because you can use the PowerPoint the same way that you might use it if you were using an interactive monitor in your classroom or just showing them the slideshow on the projector screen. So let's get started. I'm here in PowerPoint. I already made this PowerPoint prior to this video. So once you open this, you would probably start on the home page right up here. But to start recording, I'm gonna go over here to slideshow. I'm gonna do this drop down and say, record from current slide. This is under the record slideshow button. So I'm gonna click record from current slide and it puts it in this sort of present feature, but then I can click up here to start recording my voice in the background of the PowerPoint. So I'm gonna start. So I would say something like, how to narrate your PowerPoint. And then as soon as I click this next slide arrow over here, I can do that or I can use the space bar or the arrow on my keyboard and it'll automatically memorize how long you've been on each slide so it knows how long to wait before it switches slides. So I'm going to click now. Here I have what's called a quarter note. And I have this animated so that these things pop up. So this is called a quarter note. This part of the note right here is called the note head. This part right here is called the stem. And if we were using our musical language, we would call this do. Take a look at this example and then take your finger and point to every quarter note that you see on this slide. This is a lesson that I would be delivering students. Next slide. Right here we have what's called a pair of eighth notes. What you'll notice is that a pair of eighth notes actually has two note heads, whereas the quarter note just had one. It also has two stems. But what's different about the pair of eighth notes is that it has a beam that connects the two eighth notes together to make it one unit. In musical language we would call this due day. Now look at this slide again and take your finger to point out all of the due days or all of the pairs of eighth notes that you see on here. If I wanted to read this slide out loud, it would sound like this. Do, 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 do. Do, day, do, day, do, day, do, and so on. So that's the end of my teaching PowerPoint for this particular example. So to stop it, I go up here and I click stop. Now, if I, if I didn't like the way I explained something on any of these slides, what you can do is you can go up to this X up here, click on clear existing recordings, but then you can decide to clear all of the recordings you just made across all the slides, or just to clear the recording on the slide that you're on currently. So let's say I didn't like my explanation of what to do on this slide with pointing out the pairs of eighth notes and reading the whole slide all together. I could say, clear recordings on the current slide and try again just starting from here. So I would click on record and I would try again. Take your finger and point out all of the due days or the pairs of eighth notes that you see on this slide. If I wanted to read this slide out loud, it would sound like this. Do, 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 day, do, day, do, day, do. So I'm gonna stop that. And I feel pretty good about all my recordings for the rest of the slides. So I'm just gonna say, awesome, I feel good about my recording, I'm done. So I'm gonna click this X up here in the top right hand corner. I'm gonna close out. 
And then if I wanted to preview what my voice sounded like behind these slides, I would go down to where it looks like a little projector screen so that I can try presenting my slideshow and it'll automatically start changing the slides when you want it to and sharing your voice in the background. So let's see. I actually want to start from the beginning. So go right here and then present from here. Great, so let's say I love that. I think that's great. I can now go over to File. I go down to the button that says Export. I create a video. And then look right here, it says Use Recorded Timings and Narrations. That's really important because if that isn't selected, then it's not gonna have your voice in the background and it's not gonna change the slides at the right time. So make sure that's selected and then click Create Video. Now you get to decide where it's going to save on your computer. So I want to make sure I put this in my documents so that I can find it later. Save. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my browser. I'm going to go to YouTube and on YouTube there's a little button up here at the top right that looks like a video camera with a plus on it. It says create a video and more. So then I'm going to select upload video. And it takes me here. So now I'm going to go in here. I'm going to find the video that I just saved, which is right here. This is the one that I just made. So I'm going to drag and drop it over here. And it's going to upload the video. So I'm going to name it How to Narrate Your PowerPoint 2, just because I did this with another video once already. Um, so that's going to be the name of the video and then and then I can upload the video. Once it's already uploaded, which we're not going to wait through that right now, you are going to be able to copy and paste this link. So I'm going to right click on the link, copy link address, and then I'm going to go over here to my Google Classroom, which is where I'm posting everything for my kiddos. So I'm going to find a class, let's say I'm going to post this video to kindergarten. So I clicked on my kindergarten class. Right here it says share something with your class. So I'm gonna click there. And then I can cop or I can click add link, YouTube. And then I can copy and paste the, the link that I just copied a minute ago in here, click search. And this is the video that we just uploaded. So we're gonna click on that and click add. And now that's gonna post to whatever class you're posting it to. So right here I'm gonna say something like, hey everybody whatever, blah, 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 check out this video. And then I click post and all kids have access to the PowerPoint video that I posted. And what's great about it is they can look at the physical notation or whatever concept you're teaching. It obviously doesn't have to be music. And I have the ability to still use my voice to explain what I want them to learn. And all they have to do is watch the video, hear my voice and learn what we want them to learn. Thanks for watching.